Okay, so um, today we're going to start up with our exterior night rendering. And assuming for the moment that you did the interior night rendering last class, moving to the outside is fairly easy because we already have most of the lights installed inside the building and we already have the night HDRI installed. So life should be relatively easy. Uh, the couple critical things about the exterior night rendering. Um, number one, this is the showcase one. This is the one everybody always wants to do because it can really shine, make your building shine. And so when you think of it on a, on a final presentation board, you have this building, it's glowing, it has all this ethereal quality to it, et cetera. Wow, this is great, I'm gonna sell my building. So everybody always wants to do it. It's obviously the hardest one to do. Um, we have to install some extra lights depending on our view to kind of showcase the building the way we want it to. And I'm gonna walk through some of the challenges uh, of, of creating this exterior render. But the other, the other part about um, doing this exterior render and having it, having it look good is that you need to have something for the light coming out of your building to land on. And if it's not landing on something or your building's floating or it's too high, when you do the exterior rendering, it's never gonna look that good because you don't have the big wash of light spilling out of your building. So you have to make sure that you have that piece of the puzzle uh, as well. So when I go to try to establish my view in the first place, I could obviously go back to my first view. If I went to set view and I went to my render one view, this was my render one view. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, I should be in the site view here. Uh, let me go to set view. There's my exterior render one. This was the first one that I did. There's nothing wrong with doing the same one. Okay. I have decent wash that should come out into kind of this area that that wouldn't be too bad I don't have any specific lights up in here so that's going to end up being kind of dark but this particular view could be okay but we also have the opportunity to, to adjust our view and to change our view depending on what it is that we want to try to see uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna do an attempt at changing my view a bit and I'm gonna drop myself down and into my little courtyard here so that I can look out kind of past my building along the side and then I'm going to install some special lights in this particular area. But in order to set up this view to really look right, to look the part, in this I'm going to go to uh, set camera, show camera, and remember that shows the camera in our other views, so there it is for example. And I'm going to make sure that the, the camera point itself is up off the ground the distance that I want it to be up off the ground. So there it is right there. I'm going to move it for the second straight down so that it ends up about at ground level, I hope. Right there. And then I'm going to move it up. So let me move and I'm going to try to get this more at eye level. About like that. So that I'm kind of establishing that view. Does that make sense? If I don't like it, Obviously, I'm looking at it here. Let's change that. You know, maybe I want it to be down a little bit further because I want to see. I want to be looking more out at the horizon. So I'm going to lo lower that down just a little bit. So again, it's about figuring out what the right feel for your particular view is and making sure you like it. Once I like the view, I'm going to go to, let's make this big, I'll go to set view, named views, and I'm going to save it again, and this is going to be exterior render 2. Now remember, I can switch back and do this rendering in the daytime if I decide I like it. So there's nothing wrong with trying out some different views and figuring out which one really looks best and shows your building the best. One of the advantages of this particular view that I just set up is I'm looking out at the ocean almost entirely. I'm not going to have any grass in the rendering. That's going to speed up the rendering. So you need to think through those kinds of little details as well. So now that I have this view set up, obviously I have lights that are inside my building and they're going to spill out. Let me switch this for just a second into shaded mode so that we're not sneaking into the building here. There's going to be light that's going to spill out towards us here. I'll probably see a little bit inside the, the, through the glass there. Um, I'll see a little bit of light spilling out onto the patio here, but it wouldn't be bad to have a little bit more lighting installed. 
And so maybe these posts need to have their own little lights, for example. So whenever I start to set up a rendering scene like this, I want to think about what are the right elements that are really going to make this look good. And I want to make sure that I add those. So let's take a look at those pieces. Maybe there needs to be a little light on each of those. So let me go back to my base retreat here. And let me make a little bit of geometry to hold a light fixture. I don't need to actually see the light. I just want there to be a little uh, light there. So let's flip around here. Let's look at one of those posts. Let me zoom selected on the post. There we go. And let's make, I don't know, let's see here. Obviously, I'm making this up on the fly. Let's go maybe three inches. So bear with me. Now, of course, I could have built this in a separate file and done a block reference, but it's really kind of unnecessary. I mean, I'm just making a little triangle there. Uh, let me take this and this. Let me scale 1D so that it's not quite so big in this direction. We'll drop it to maybe four inches. Move inch like that. And then let's move it vertical. Let's go maybe 10 inches. Oops. How about move vertical? Maybe 20 inches. Sorry, I moved it up instead of down. And so there I have a little, a little tiny thing that's going to hide a light. OK, nothing particularly fancy. Let me go to materials, and let's load in a material for it. Let's go load material, um, V-Ray. Let's go to materials. Um, this is on the, on the coast, so I'm going to use a, copy, uh, uh, a copper patina, because obviously the salt would have corroded a little bit. So I'm trying to be a little bit realistic with this. Uh, let's see, copper. There it is. Change apply material to selection. There we go. And let's go ahead and take these and put them on each of the posts here. OK, so now I have them on each of the little posts. It would have been helpful if I had centered them all. <laughs> um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I can come back and center them later. I'll save it. And I'm going to jump back into my final site here. And let's, sorry, I've been working in SketchUp this morning. So I'm going to middle mouse button to orbit all day. And let me go into Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. There's my retreat base. Let me update it. There it is. My little lights are installed. Now I need to actually put the little spotlights inside those lights. So let's go ahead and create a spotlight. And we will say that the diameter, I'm going to use the same proportions, just a little bit smaller. So I'll do a diameter of 6 inches 
and a length will go back here a little bit like that. Notice I, when I created this, I used the side of that to get the angle correct. Right, I helped myself out a little bit so that the angle is shining out. Let me go ahead and let's move this to the middle. Let's move it vertically, I don't know, by uh, let's say negative 1.5 inches. Let's move it again out by one inch. There we go. The, the goal, obviously, is that that needs to be floating in the center of this. It looks like it needs to go back a little bit more. So let's drop it back a little bit, 0.5 inches, so that that's nicely in the center of my piece. Now we need to edit the light itself. So I'll go to Properties. I'll go to Light. We need to change the color, 255, 214, 170. This should be radiant power watts. 30 watt, we'll try that one out. Decay should be inverse square. And the rest of these all look fine. I'm then going to take it and I'm going to copy it. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me change the layer. Let me go, this would be exterior spot lights. Change object layer. That's just so that I can select them later on. And then we'll copy along here. And like that. So now I've put those little lights in. If we go back to my exterior render view, see there's the little lights, and I'm going to ha have a little bit of light. If you wanted a downlight coming from the building itself, you could install that kind of a downlight. Okay, so again, it's about creating the correct atmosphere for this particular rendering. So what else can I do? One of the things that people uh, love to do is they love to have little fountains or pools or whatever. And so I can't help myself but talk you through how do you create that. Okay, that doesn't mean that it's appropriate in every design. For your purposes in this class, of course, you can have a pool. Uh, the pool that is part of this building is hanging on the side of the cliff. So what, right? Um, we won't worry about structure or earthquakes or anything else or landslides or what have you. Anyway, so I'm going to walk you through kind of how I went about making this. Um, I think I have it on its own layer. I thought I did. There, pool. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll turn off. Um, the pool layer. Oops. Let me make a new layer and I'll call it pool 2 just so you guys can see how I went about doing this. Okay, so a couple things. One, let's hide this. Okay, you have to create the geometry that's going to hold your pool. So that's relatively simple. Essentially, I created a box that's really tall that goes down into the ground. And I created, much like I have on my patio, a little border or a coping that goes around the outside of the pool. So those pieces are established. Those have their materials assigned to them. I'm going to go ahead and create a sublayer for exterior pool, exterior, and we'll change the objects onto that layer. I don't think you really need to see me create that. Okay, They're relatively simple. So I'll turn those pool exterior off. And you can see that I've already created the interior of the pool here as well. I'll turn those off for right now. And let me turn back on my exterior. And now I'll go through the process of creating it. Well, this is kind of like a cushion. We made those a while back. I need to be able to um, create the shape that works for this particular building. So first thing I need is I need a, sh uh, a rectangle that goes around uh, this particular uh, building. And so let me go ahead and I'm going to start it. Let me see here. You can see that I have this coping slightly above where uh, the rest is. So let me go ahead and I'll do a rectangle from there. And I'll come out to this outer wall over here. 
and we can now turn it off. Okay, so I have that piece. It needs to be a little bit smaller than it was, so I'm going to scale this. So let me do a scale 1D. I want it to stay against the building there, but I want it to be shorter, and we'll go maybe, uh, actually I need to know what the distance is right now. All right, so it's 10 feet by 20 feet. It's a nice size pool. So let me scale 1D. And this is now going to be, uh, we'll say, 9 foot, I'm thinking, 9 foot 4. There we go. And then I'm going to scale this direction by the same 9 foot 4. Like that, so that this rectangle is a little bit smaller than the outer walls. So now you can see it in context with the outer walls. Okay, so now I need to draw the other pieces of this building, or of this pool. So let's turn that uh, back off for a second. And I'll start by drawing the shape of the pool on, in this direction. Okay, so to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and switch the C-plane so that I can draw in the perspective view. And this is good practice for you. I'm going to go to set C-plane. I'm going to go to three points. And we will snap there. We'll snap there. And we'll go straight up. That then shifts my C-plane, which is going to allow me to draw on this nicely. So let me go ahead and I'm going to do this first one which is a control point curve. I'm going to start right there at that corner. I'm going to come down by maybe, uh, let's go eight feet there. I'm going to go across by half the distance. So we'll say about four feet, six inches or so there. And I'm going to come back up. Oh, excuse me. I have to go all the way across. This was nine feet, four inches there. And I'm going to come back up to that point as well. I'll hit enter to finish, and that gives me a nice little barrel. Now, you may need to make some modifications to this point. Remember, we can always turn our points back on to get some control points, and we can adjust. One of the things that tends to happen is we don't want this edge to intersect with the building itself, even though it's up against the building. So I tend to pull that away a little bit just to make sure. We can do the same thing at this end over here if we need to, but I don't think we're going to need to. Let's move this down by maybe five feet. Ah, let me reset my C-plane. Let me go to set C-plane, world top. Let's move this down by maybe five feet, like that. Now I need the curve that goes the other direction. So I'll do the same thing. We'll go to set C-plane. Three points. This time we're going to do it along this outer edge. There we go. And now I can draw in this in this view as well. So let's go to my curve here. And we're going to go down eight feet again. I'm going to go over nine feet uh, six. Did I say four? Four inches there. Now this next one, we're going to go over another, I don't know, uh, let's say, say 15 feet. And then we're going to come back up. We're going to have to do some modifications here. All right, let me take this. I need to turn those edit points back on. This should have been right there. I'm going to move it vertically because I don't want it to come all the way up here. I want it to be about four feet deep. So let's see if we can't go down. Oops. Move. 
We'll drop it maybe four feet. Yeah, let's move it. Let's do a foot higher. And let me draw from here up to that point. And let's fill it with a radius of one foot from there to there. Oh, come on. There we go. Obviously, pool. I'm trying to make it look like a pool. So I have this, this, and this. We're going to join those together. And then I need to move this so that this goes to the midpoint there. This look familiar to you? Right? Looks like a curved network. The only other problem is I need these two to intersect. Otherwise, the curved network's not going to work. So let me again turn those points on. And I'm going to take one of these points, and I'm going to move it. Let me snap to my point here. There. And I want it to snap. Yeah, you know what? Let's rebuild this curve with a few more because I need a better rebuild. Six. All right, there we go. Let me turn those points on. There we go. A few more points. Now let's move this down so that it intersects. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. OK, so now that I have that shape established, remember we need curves going in each direction. So this rectangle isn't working quite yet. So we need to split that with this shape, which now gives us one two, three curves in one direction, and one curve in the other direction. So this should look very much like a curved network to you. So we'll take these guys, and we'll go to um, surface curve network. It should recognize it correctly, and we'll say OK. That then gives us the interior of the pool. Let me go back and set my C plane to world top gives us the interior of the pool. If I were to turn on the pool exterior, it's hidden a little bit. Looks pretty good. Okay, maybe it's a little bit, um, you know, maybe it would have a flatter bottom in real life, but it's close enough. You get the idea. Now, the other thing about a pool is typically there's a tile line at the top that looks like tile. So we're going to fake that a little bit. Let me go ahead and create a plane here like that. Let's move this so that it is coplanar with the bottom of my coping. And then let's move it vertically by the distance of the tile. We'll say six inches or so. Oops, negative six. Ah, move vertical, negative 12 inches. There we go, something like that. Now that I have that in there, I can take this and split it with this surface, which gives me, once I delete this, it gives me the tile, or an approximation of the tile, in the bottom of the pool. So now it's a matter of establishing the materials for it. What I did in the past is I just created a basic gray, I don't even know, pool gray, just looks like gray, Okay, assuming a gray bottom pool. and. I put a porcelain blue as my tile. So I didn't divide it up with little tile lines. I just said, hey, this is going to be porcelain blue and called it a day. So I could do the same thing for these two pieces. Since I already assigned the material to the other pool, this interior wall, I'm just going to turn those back on. You see, in this case, I did it so that there is a little bit more flat bottom. You get the idea nonetheless. So the last piece is I need the water to be installed in this pool. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and create a surface. And this time, let's turn off the interior, excuse me, let's turn off the exterior walls here. And I still have 
the rectangle that I created as part of it. So let's go ahead and create a surface from there to there. As long as it's larger than the pool, that's a good thing. But it needs to be smaller than the exterior walls. The other thing is it's typically down a little bit on the tile. So let's move it vertically negative 3 inches, which would be halfway down the tile. So now I have that established, but I need to put materials on it. So on the course website, I have um, the several different waters. And of course, I'm not logged in, but I'll, I'll see if I can pull them up anyway. So if I go to resources, come on, V-Ray materials. No, sorry. Hmm. Water. There we go. I have several different oh thanks. I have several different waters that are available. The because of the scale, the fountain water is the right one. And luckily you can get it. You can kind of see it looks like water. Okay, so you'll want to download this one. I think it's already included in your package if you have all the, the V-Ray materials anyway. So now I need to put that on. So if I go to materials, I should have uh, water fountain. Water fountain, there it is, it's already loaded. Let me go ahead and apply material to selection. Now it's on that surface as well. So now that I have this all reestablished and I've got my materials assigned and all the rest of it, now it's a matter of saving it and bringing it back into the final scene. So let me go to File and then Save. And we'll jump back into my master site. So I already had the pool there, but this shows you how you would go about creating it. Let me go to my Blocks, Block Manager. And let's go ahead and update that one. All right, so sounds good. Now, what would a pool be in a night scene if we didn't turn the pool light on, right? So we have to put the pool light on, too. So let me flip this around a little bit. And we need to create a light that comes out of the pool. And so I'm going to use a V-Ray rectangular light to do this. And we'll use my geometry, I hope, to create this rectangular light. Let me. Bear with me for just a second. There, just to, to be able to see it a little bit more. I'm going to use my water plane to help me create this rectangular light. So there's the rectangular light right there. It needs to be below the surface of the water, though. So let's move it vertically, let's say negative one foot. And I want the light to be pointing up, not down. So I'm going to um, type in flip. Oh. So that the arrow is pointing up. Now here's where rectangular lights get tricky. This is not um, necessarily something that we can, um, I can give you a prescriptive, like, oh, set it to this wattage and call it a day. It's based on the size of the rectangular light. So if I change number one, I have to change the color of the light. This one, it might be kind of fun to play around with the color a little bit. So I'm going to use like a turquoise color light just to see what happens. Okay, And we're going to switch to watts. And we're going to bump this up to maybe 300 or so as a starting place because it's a pretty big surface. Uh, I do want it to be invisible. I may end up deciding to make it double-sided. I'm not quite sure yet. We're going to have to do some test renderings to start. So now that that's in, back installed, let me go back to my layers. Let me turn back on my exterior like that. We're going to go back to my set view exterior render 2. There we are. So we should get some glow out of the pool. We're going to find out. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I already loaded my HDRI backgrounds from last class. So if I go to my 
V-Ray options, and I go to environment, I click on my map here, my light file is there, and my sky is there. Okay, so both of those are good. I'm going to go to my output, and I'm going to make sure my output is set to be really small, because we got to test it first. I'm also going to go to my glow, sorry, my system settings, and I'm going to make sure distributed rendering is off. So then I'll go ahead and go back to my master site. I'll save one more time. And we're going to do a render of this and see what happens. So this is where we hurry up and wait. I can't make it go any faster. So it's not quite done rendering this last square here, but I have a glass railing that goes along. I see my little light fixtures. That's good. The glass is reflecting the pool. That's why I get double reflections here. The pool seems like it's doing OK. It looks like my guess of about 300 watts is, is not too bad. Um, it looks, though, that the spotlights that are coming down from each of these are probably a little bit strong. They're pretty bright in the context of everything. So I think I may drop the wattage of those down a little bit. This is why I do the test render. I may bump up the wattage a little bit more for the pool to have it glow. It's just it's a matter of kind of solidifying what's right. The other thing is the sky is completely black. So I may come back into my um, options here. And I currently, under environment, I have the, the background to point at point 0.1. I may bring that back up a little bit. So maybe I'll do point 0.6. And we'll give that a shot to see if I can get some skies or some stars in the sky. Um, it's it's again it's a it's a fine line of figuring out what's right. It looks like I am seeing into my building, so that's a good sign. Uh, I would say the biggest thing is that these are are just too bright for right now. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit, and I'll do another rendering, and then I'll ultimately do a higher quality rendering so you can see what it looks like there as well. So the goal today is to try to get outside of your building. I see lots of smiles, right? So let's get you let's get you caught up. As we go forward, we're going to start moving into creating plan sections, elevations of your building. So it needs to be kind of done because there's a lot more that we have to do to a done final project. Okay? So try to finish up, right? Remember, remember what I said last class about um, catching up on missing exercises, etc. Don't forget about that either. right? Remember, the last rate of withdrawal is Friday. I'm not going to kick anybody out, but if you're too nervous and want to bail, that's your choice. Fair enough? <laughs>